Well, that was unexpected. I mean, talk about getting bombarded with a lot of trailers, if you will. But yeah, unexpected. So I'm going to take this time to talk about three trailers I know some people would love me to talk about. So let's start with the first one that was kind of not that big of a trailer, but still had some good footage. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is the big GameSpot trailer that they put for Sonic 2. And I've got to admit, it really looks tremendous. Um, first of all, the fact that, yeah, we do see some footage we've seen before, but we see new footage like Knuckles stepping out of the portal, his eyes glowing purple, um, if you will. The fact that he's telling Sonic again he's no match for me or match for him and that it's his destiny to destroy him. We get... We once again see Sonic doing the surfing on the, or the snowboarding on the snow, and, but yet now we see Knuckles going after him and Sonic making a crack. Of, oh, look, great, it's the Winter Soldier kind of deal. Um, the fact that, you know, we see more of what's going on. We see Tails once more in there. We see, we actually see what looks like to be a live action, or at least CGI live action take on the Death Egg robot from the Death Egg itself. Uh, making an appearance at the end. The fact that we see Sonic and Knuckles at the end as well, going after each other in the temple of the floating island, which again, in the background, you see these images of owls, which I think are going to play a factor, a major factor, um, in the uh, in the movie, especially why, you know, Knuckles wants to go after Sonic, because maybe, for all we know, Knuckles might have been raised by Longclaw as well, and, you know, basically... You know, um, I, I, I would assume, I would assume maybe something happens to Longclaw again, or maybe Robotnik captures Longclaw, uh, or something. I don't know. I just know Longclaw is going to probably play a, a, a factor in this as, as well, if she's still around. Um, so we got that, we got that moment in there. Um, as well, with both of them going after each other, just colliding in midair. We see more of the floating island being revealed. And then, like I say, we see the, the uh, big tornado with the green electricity in there. And obviously, we, we see what the result is, like I said later on, with a death egg uh, robot appearing, which we can assume is out of the death egg or something. So really, so really, just, uh, an, really just an interesting uh, trailer for to be like doing the Super Bowl. I thought it looked good. I cannot wait for it, you know, to, to come out uh, in two months. It's going to be worth watching. And anybody that's wondering if I'm going to go see it, well, one, it, dep it depends on my schedule. Excuse me. It depends on my schedule. But most definitely, I am going to go see it. What I'm probably going to do, depending on the situation, is I'm going to take the bus to go see the movie, and then I'm going to come home is what I'm going to do. What I may do, because, you know, that might be the week my mom is off for her spring break. Uh, what I may do, depending on, like I said, on the scheduling, let's say if I'm off on that Friday when it comes out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, get up early and I'll probably, and Lord forgive me for thinking about this, may go and uh, basically, you know, you know may go and tell my mom, hey, I'm going to go to work and everything. Basically schedule, basically say I'm scheduled for work is what I'm going to do. And now, again, Lord, forgive me for thinking that. That's something I'm considering because, again, you know, it, it, it would be around the week of her spring break, but it would basically give her, give her the place to herself and would give me time, um, if you will, to be able to, you know, be able to go out and see a movie by myself uh, as well on opening day. So that's, Something I'm considering. There's something I'm considering, but after watching the big game trailer, like I said, more, you know, stuff being shown to us, you know, some stuff we've seen before, some new stuff. The fact that we actually get to see the size comparisons between all three and the fact that Knuckles is bigger, just like he is in Sonic Boom, but he's not like dumbed down, you know, here. Um, it, it's going to be great. It's going to be a, a tremendous uh, time with this film. And I love the fact that with the more footage that we're getting, they're not doing too much with it, but the more footage we're getting, you know, through these teasers and these trailers and all that, it's definitely, to me, it's definitely setting the tone 
it's definitely setting the tone for um, what's to come in the near, uh, you know, in the near couple of months, if you would, setting the tone of what to expect. And just by these trailers uh, alone, guys, just by these trailers alone, it definitely feels like they're going to set up to a third film as well. So expect, in my opinion, expect another post credit scene where we might see, you know, the revelation of Amy coming to be, you know, like her showing up. Maybe we'll see Sally. We Again, anything is, nothing is off limits according to, I think what his name, his name was, Jeff Fowler or something like that. Nothing is uh, off limits when it comes to doing these movies because he wants to incorporate as much as he can in, from the Sonic lore. So nothing obviously, you know, is off limits when it comes to these movies. So it's going to be really interesting uh, when it's all said and done to see how they lead into a third film because it looks like that, you know, it looks like basically that's what we're going to be getting um, here without a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion. Uh, again, I could be wrong, but, you know, let me know what you think about it. But, yeah, I thought the trailer, I thought the big the big game trailer part, uh, spot for it was good. Like I said, gave us stuff we have not seen before. And it's really getting me hyped up for the movie when it comes out in April. So, yeah, really looking, so, yeah, it did a great job, in my opinion. But now, let's talk about the second trailer that was teased during the Super Bowl you know, with 30 seconds, but the full one was brought out online the same day. All right, so the second trailer that was teased with a 30-second spot during the Super Bowl, but was fully released in its two-minute-plus form online, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Badness. Holy crap is all I could say. Holy badoli, if you will. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but holy badoli. This was... A heck of a trailer. One heck of a trailer. I mean, I mean the fact that it starts out with Doctor Strange. It starts out with Doctor Strange basically waking up to... Well, not waking up, but having the same dream over and over again. You know, about, you know, things happening and then waking up and then starting to live the nightmare. Or basically, you know, what, you know, he's dealing with right now. And, you know, we get more interaction with him and Wanda we get more of a sense of what's happening the basically the results of what he's done and everything you know we see that he has to stand trial between he has to basically what happens is that you know everybody is getting on him about what he did right in Spider-Man uh, No Way Home and what he has to do basically what he has to do basically is stand trial uh, doing this is a there is a moment where he has to stand trial, and because this deals with the multiverse, he has to stand trial in front of what's known as the Illuminati. Now, the Illuminati, basically in the Marvel comics, consists of a group of certain individuals that basically are, I guess you could say, assigned or given responsibility to look over the multiverse, make sure everything stays as it should. Now. What's crazy, what's crazy about this is during this, during the shot where he's basically cuffed and he's brought to trial, brought to, you know, brought in front of the Illuminati, if you will, he's brought in front of the Illuminati, the first voice we hear is a very familiar voice. It's a voice that says, I think it's time we should tell them. And the reason it sounds very familiar is it's Patrick Stewart's, a.k.a. Charles Xavier from the X-Men films of the early to mid-2000s. Now, word had gone around that uh, Patrick was working with Kevin Feige on a role for a future Marvel project. We didn't know what it was, but now obviously we do. And the evidence of it, the fact that it could be him is you see this back of this bald head, very familiar bald head. It's like, it's got to be him. Now, when people were going over this scene uh, from the trailer, they were pointing out that it looks like we have Black Panther on there, as well as part of this Illuminati. We might have an incarnation of Tony Stark, whether it's uh, Robert Downey or Tom Cruise or whoever, you know, on there as well. That it looks like we have, 
Baron Mondu or whatever his name is on there. Uh, and, you know, as part of that, as well as a few others. Now, I don't know who the other two could be. I know one of them would have to be a female character representation, but who that is, we don't know yet. But I wouldn't be surprised as well if one of the other members is Kang. Because remember, Kang is supposed to be somewhat the big bad of this entire situation, right? So I would not be surprised if one of the members of the Illuminati in whatever dimension or universe he's in is Kang the Conqueror. I would not be surprised by that. I would not. No, whatsoever. I would not be surprised that it's, you know, one of the members is Kang. But yeah, he's basically brought in front of them to stand trial for what he did. Uh, we do see American Chavez uh, in there. And it's at the beginning we see her being confronted by, uh, I can't think of the name, uh, the Skeksis or whatever this, this Skirtsis or Skeksis or whatever it is. Surskis or something? But basically, it's a, it's a monster comprised of these bands of Surskis that also are connected to X-Men, if you will, because that's the, the name of the power or whatever that gives uh, Charles Xavier's brother his juggernaut powers. So anyway, anyway, we, we see her get confronted with that. She's held up, strung up a little bit, and she's confronted by this monster being comprised of it. Uh, then, like I said, we see all these other situations. We see the world kind of like being wiped out a little bit a la Thanos situation, but differently because of what Strange did. Of course, we get the moment between him and evil Doctor Strange, which is obviously the evil Doctor Strange from the What If animated series. And like I said, he goes to, to Wanda to get her help. We see him, obviously, with the dark hold, getting it from Wanda, because you see the red magic related to her, you know, floating around him. And I'm not going to be surprised that when he sees that red magic or that red power floating around him after you looking into the dark hold, that maybe he's going to realize, but we won't find out till later on in the movie, he's going to realize that, hmm, Wanda's been messing with stuff she shouldn't be messing with. And it does kind of, it does kind of hint at that as well, in my opinion, when you see Wanda being confronted by another version of herself, a more darker, beat-up version of herself, and what looks like to be a more, I guess you could say, theatrical version, a more theatrical version of the house that she was in, or she tried to live in, in WandaVision. So, anyway, she gets confronted by this darker side of her, who's this, you know, putting her hand out to her, you know, to her face and everything. And then we get a, a scene. Everybody says this is a money shot. Like, you know, the Illuminati, you know, with you know, like Strange standing before the Illuminati is a money shot and everything. But then they say this is also a money shot where basically, well, basically uh, Wanda, you know, is talking to Strange and she, and she brings up the fact that you break the rules, you're considered a hero. I break the rules, I'm considered an enemy. And then she's like, that seems, that doesn't seem fair, does it? Or something like that. She basically, she basically brings up the fact, the fact that it kind of seems unfair that when, you know, Strange breaks the rules to try to restore things or do things with reality that he's considered a hero, but when she does it, she's the enemy. And when she basically brings that up, like, hey, she's considered, she's looked at as the enemy, obviously that's a, a chime, if you will, a chime back to WandaVision on how a lot of the people looked at her there for what she did. So, long story short, it looks like we're going to get a confrontation between the two, because now, obviously, what Strange is probably, in my opinion, going to be prepared for, hopefully, is the fact that Wanda is going to now try to, you know, change reality in her favor. Like, she's going to want to do what she can to get what she wants. Because a lot of people have alluded to the fact that Wanda is going to want to try to find a way to get her kids back. And that her bringing up the fact that, hey, you know, strange, you break the rules of reality, you're considered a hero, me, I'm considered an enemy, or I'm going to be considered the bad guy. And that it seems a little unfair, a little unjust. To me, that's when I think Strange is going to confront her and say, look, I know what you did. Or basically, well, he's not just going to confront her and say, I know what you did. He's going to, this is my opinion. 
He's going to confront her in that scene and say, I know, he says, you know, you remember you told me about Westview, right? He's going to bring up Westview. He says, you remember you kind of mentioned that to me? He says, uh, and he can, and then I've got a feeling what's going to happen is he's going to bring up during that moment, maybe that, you know, she tried to, you know, bring up Westview view when they, when he went up to her and he says, I'm not here to talk about that, but I've got a feeling that moment when she brings up the fact that the unfairness between the similar situations, uh, strange is going to be like, well, was it fair for you to trap a whole town down in a false reality? Because you know, you lost vision, you know, is that, is that, was that fair? You know, that you did that, you imprisoned these people, you know, to, to your own will and everything. I've got a feeling he's going to say something during that moment that's going to set her off because, again, with her saying, hey, it seems a little unfair that, you know, I'm considered a bad guy when I do what you're doing, but you're considered a hero. So he's going to say something during that moment, mentioning, bringing up Westview again and saying, hey, you mentioned Westview. Well, let me ask you this. Was it fair for you to keep people against their will because you couldn't accept the fact that maybe you're not mentally ready to have these powers or be in the position you're in? And, we, and that might happen. And you know what, mate? And, uh, and you know what? What I'm trying to say, let me get some coffee here. And you know what? Again. Again. Basically, like I said, that might happen. But this might also be what leads Wanda to Professor X. Think about it. But think about it. The Illuminati is supposed to be like a major part of the story, maybe. So, and, and Professor X being who he is, Charles Xavier, I would not be surprised if he plays a role in not only, you know, controlling Wanda, but taking her in and saying, child, let me help you. And she ends up in that role that, in that role that we've seen characters like her and let's say the Phoenix end up in to where Charles will use his psychic powers to basically um, in prison hide all this tragedy from her mind so she can focus and you know use her powers for the right race. So I think that may be I think that's maybe why she's in this film as well. So the fact that not only is that scene alluding to the fact that she's kind of going to be like one of the main you know, last obstacles that Strange has to go through uh, to restore things, but that she's going to be taken in by Xavier, you know, after the Illuminati is like, what do, what do we do with her? Because I got to think that she's going to have to stay in trial too. And Xavier will be like, let me take her in. I'll help her. I've dealt with, pe you know, people, mutants like her before. I've dealt with beings like her before. So I got a feeling that's what's going to happen with Wanda, but... Yeah, that, that scene where she says, hey, you break the rules, you're considered a hero, I break the rules, I'm considered the enemy, you know, it just seems a little unfair. I thought that was a great shot. I do agree it's a money shot because it's basically showing that she's allowing this, this side of her to come back out. Because again, well, again, I think what it is is that she's looking at the fact that she has an opportunity and maybe it's her other self when she, who confronts her that's like, look, you have all this power. You have an opportunity to basically get what you want, get the happiness you want. So I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if that's what, you know, makes her do what she's going to do or do, do what we're assuming she's going to do. And again, I'm not going to be surprised if Charles Xavier's character plays a role and, you know, take her in and then maybe we get a post credit scene or whatever at the end of the film where he basically wipes her memory or well, basically imprisons all these tragedies she's dealt with to help her focus on, on you know, starting things anew, uh, if you will. Basically, he helps her try to suppress what she's going through. So, yeah, that was, like I said, that was a great scene, great shot. And then, of course, the end there with uh, the evil Doctor Strange basically coming up like, you know, looking like a zombie Doctor Strange, but with all these different arms and, you know... Um, arms and everything, black goodness and everything around him, basically very similar to what he had become at the end of the What If episode, was a great money shot as well, because it's like, holy crap, you're, what you're doing is you're showing how many obstacles Doctor Strange has to, you know, go through just to make up for what he's done, as well as realize that, hey, I, I can't, I shouldn't have done what I did, I should have listened. And I think what, I think the big twist at the end, this is what I think is going to be the big twist. 
Okay, this is what I think is going to be the big twist. Not only are we going to get Professor X in there, you know, courtesy of Patrick Stewart, not only is he going to play a role in probably taking Wanda in when it's all said and done and subduing, you know, the tragic memory she has to allow her to have some peace. I would not be surprised about if that happens, you know, that being one twist. But I would not be surprised that another twist could be, not saying it would happen, because they'd have to work with Sony to make this happen, but I would not be, I would not put it past Kevin Feige, and I would, you know, or Marvel or Disney to do this along with Sony, I would not be surprised that we end up getting a, a time travel moment to where Strange confronts his past self and tells him, don't cast that spell. I've seen what's happened. I'm you. I saw what happened. Do not cast that spell. And then what happens... And then I, what I'm assuming, again, not saying it would happen, I'm assuming that once, you know, he confronts his past self about doing it, then anything that happened in No Way Home will be irrelevant. And I know that sounds weird and that makes it pointless, but think about it. Think about it. It makes it irrelevant, um, if you will, because it will never happen. And I think what that's going to do is it's going to change things up to where strangers probably going to start having memories of what he tells, you know, Peter, you just got to deal with this yourself. You got to prove your innocence yourself. And that's it. So I'm not going to be surprised if maybe that happens too. You know, he goes back in time, confronts his past self, and basically makes him not do this spell or anything like that, or at least come up with a different kind of spell that basically, you know, wipes out any memory of people, you know, hearing about, you know, Peter doing this or that, or the revelation of the identity. You know, not wipe people's minds out completely, but just do it in a way to where, hey, what well, you just heard, that that never happened. So, and that might occur too. Again, I'm not really sure, but again, I wouldn't put, but what I'm saying is I wouldn't put it past them to pull something like that out of a hat. Because just when you think just when you think you have all the answers, as Roddy Piper used to say, that's when he changes the questions. And I would not be surprised if we get a moment like that to where he goes in, back in time, confronts his past self. We see Tom Holland there with uh, Zadea, if you will, and, uh, and the guy that plays uh, Peter's best friend. And basically, Doctor Strange tells himself, hey, don't do this. Don't cast this spell because I, because I'm you from the future. I'm the one that already did it. Did it, and what happens is not good. And then maybe he shows him a vision. Maybe he puts his hand on him, and he shows him what's going to happen. And then the past Doctor Strange that was going to, you know, cast a spell in No Way Home is like not doing it. You're just going to have to do what they just, you know. Maybe you know after he shows him the vision and then disappears, that the past Doctor Strange, as I was trying to say, stops doing the spell and says, "You know what, Peter." On second thought, you got to deal with this yourself. You got to figure a way out of this yourself. You got to prove your innocence by yourself. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like that. Because again, you know, it I, it's something that would keep things interesting and intriguing. Yeah, it does make No Way Home a little irrelevant to an extent. But hey, if it's to kind of keep the multiverse from keep from falling to pieces, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't. I would not put it past them. But overall, the trailer to me looked really, really good. And I cannot say any more than that. And I cannot wait for it to come out. And it does have that Sam Raimi-like feel because there's a shot in there. You know, there's a shot in there before we see the zombie strange. But we see all these dark entities just floating around and all crawling at the, at the sky and everything. Very Sam Raimi-like, uh, if you will. So... You know, with his style of, of storytelling. So, to me, this is going to be really good when it's all said and done. Just really, really good. And to me, it's going to be another box office hit for, for Marvel, for the MCU and Disney. I'm not going to put, I'm not going to say any more than that. But let me know what you guys' thoughts on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, newest trailer. And now, last but not least, let's talk about one that just dropped this morning. So, the one that just dropped this morning, you would think the Super Bowl would have been one of the best places to put it, but nope. They waited till this morning, 
They waited to the day, ironically, when the complete series officially, from a retail standpoint, is released in stores. That's right. You can actually now get it in stores besides Disney, uh, besides the Disney Movie Club. You can actually now officially get it, get it in stores. But today they dropped the teaser trailer. They said teaser. They didn't say official. They dropped the teaser trailer for Disney Plus's live action slash animated, you know, slash CGI movie. That's right. 2D animation CGI movie, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And I'll put it this way. I know a lot of people are going to be mixed about it. There's mostly positives on it, mostly positive. But, you know, the, the way it's presented, it almost starts out like it's one of those E! True Hollywood story deals. But, oh my God. Oh my God. It is just, woo! Talk about, talk about crazy. So, this trailer basically shows that the Rescue Rangers, I, I, I don't know how to put it. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. It's like, okay, I'll put, it, I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. I'll put it to you like this. Somebody mentioned it, but I'll put it to you like this. Remember Cool World? Remember that movie? Yeah, Cool World was a combination of live action and animation characters living together, right? Think of it along that way. Because that's basically how this is presented. And my God, the references here are just crazy. We get Roger Rabbit in there as a cameo. We get MC, we get MC Scat Cat and Paula Abdul cameo in there. We get Three Little Pig cameos. We get, at the end of this teaser trailer, MLP. I am not, I'm not lying here. MLP, My Little Pony cameos. But, here's the thing. It's not necessarily the main six as we know them. Yes, you see Rainbow Dash at the front. You see Fluttershy, you know, in the back. But then you see these other ponies. One of them, obviously, is Applejack, but she's colored differently. And Chip and Dale riding on them. And it's like, what in the name? I mean, I guarantee you, I guarantee you fans in the MLP community are going to look at that. They'll be like, what, 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 you know? And I think it's because Disney has this deal with Hasbro, with, you know, Hasbro is always producing the figures. So because of that connection, I'm thinking they work something out with Hasbro saying, hey, can we do this little cameo of your characters? And that's what they did. You know, that's what they did. I think that's part of the deal they have with Hasbro. No, they're not buying Hasbro as much as people fear they may. Basically, it's a deal with Hasbro to bring the characters in because Hasbro makes the toys. I'm just saying. But yeah, the trailer starts out, like I said, almost like an E2 Hollywood story. Talking about, you know, how the, you know, how successful Rescue Rangers were and everything. And then basically asking the question, what happens when it all comes crashing down? And then we kind of see, you know, where the Rangers are, like, Talks about vanity, then you see Dale and stuff. You see, then you see Chip, Ip, you see Monterey. And we don't see Gadget, but we know she's there. We know she's there. We see her in the image. I hope to God she's not the villain. I don't think she will be because that'd be like, really? You're going to take a very beloved character who you just focused an episode of your DuckTales reboot on and you're going to turn her into a villainess? I don't think so. I don't think so, because I think what's going on, because there's, there's two scenes where you see these hands, these like CGI hands, holding out a picture of the team, holding out a pin of the team, just, you know, touching it and everything, and you're thinking, that's Gadget. Just, just the way the hands are designed, that's Gadget. And what's funny is she's CGI. She's CGI. And Dale, he ends up being CGI. He even, because there's a scene where Chip's like, you look different now, don't you? And Dale's like, hey, I'm not hiding the fact that I got the CGI or surgery. Basically making fun of the fact that, yeah, you know, a lot of us 2D guys go CGI and all that. He's not the only one. Gadget, it looks like, is going to be CGI too. And it's like, what? It's like, what? why? What's going on here? You know? And what's interesting, though, is this. 
Dale, maybe I'm seeing things. He has something on his arm like this. It's like a band, like a silver band. And what I'm assuming is Gadget's hands and arms, looking at the picture and the pen, has the same band. I'm wondering. I'm wondering, huh? Think about it. Think about it. I, I, th I think you know what I'm alluding to. But we'll see. But yeah, it's very meta. Very meta here. I mean, they even make fun of the cats, the recent live-action movie. They touch upon on how when CGI was presented as the next alternative, things were supposed to be, you know, promoted as real, but they're not. But, and obviously, it's a story about getting the team back together. You even see a freaking live-action CGI version of the Ranger plane. You see Zipper in there, you know, and everything, which is good. I wonder if who's going to voice him. One of the voices that they got is Kiki Lane. I'm wondering, is Kiki Lane going to be Gadget? Makes you wonder. But anyway, it looks really... I'm going to tell you, this, this teaser trailer looks fantastic. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, kind of uncertain about it at first, but it looks fantastic in my opinion. It looks really, uh, really good um, when you get down to it as I check something here, guys. But it looks really... It looks really, really good, guys, and that's... That's all I can really say about it. It's all I can really say, but that it looks really good. Um, and I can't wait for it. I cannot wait. Uh, I'm going to provide links to all the trailers down below so you guys can check them out. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are on it. Um, um, again, it's out. It's on the Disney um, YouTube app or oh, YouTube page. Check it out. It looks really, really good. And that's all I'm going to say, guys. That's all I'm going to say on the... Um, like I said, that's all I'm going to say, guys, on the trailers and everything for Sonic, Doctor Strange 2, and Rescue Rangers. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Comment if you like. i got to let my phone charge now. It's about to die. And I am out. Super chats and everything are open during the uh, live chat during this premiere, which would be really great and appreciated. Check me out at Venmo uh, at brian walmart 2 Cash App at BWRoses98 to help financially support me there um, as well. And like I said, Super Chats are open, along with Super Stickers, are open and would be appreciated in the live chat during the premiere of this video. But let me know which trailers you like the most out of these three. Which one are you looking forward to the most? Both and everything. And I am out.